Well, good evening and welcome. I'm Renee Barrio, the Chief Curator here at the McNay, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our summer presentation of Artists Looking at Art, and welcome Raul Gonzalez, who is our featured artist this um, summer. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this program, uh, four times a year, the McNay invites an artist to present work for a two-month period, and then we have an opportunity to have a conversation with the artists and learn from the artists uh, about their work and what motivates them and their sources of inspiration and a little about their technique. Um, so it's really, I'm really happy to be joined by Raul tonight. Um, we Thank you. met a couple of years ago, I guess. You were, yeah. you were a graduate student at mm -hmm. UTSA. Right. Um, so we've had a, a rather recent relationship. So um, I will be learning things along with you tonight. So that that'll be fun. Uh, but before we sort of look at work and kind of dive into it, I thought we would start by having you just sort of give us a little bit of your background, where you're from, sure. where you went to school, those sort of things for the people who in the audience who don't know you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'm from, I'm originally from Houston. Um, I was born and raised there, but then I moved here about four and a half years ago. But uh, in Houston, I grew up in a family where um, culture, we didn't really have access to much of it. I mean, most of the culture I was I guess that I saw as a kid was through movies, cartoons, video games, magazines, and um, that's where I learned anything about art was from, I mean, those sort of things, like t-shirts and stuff like that. That's where I, I would look at those objects, or not objects, but images, and try to copy them, or in grade school, when I would get bored in class, I would find myself, really, a lot of times it was in math class, <laughs> I find myself... Which is funny though, because I, I was, I really liked math for a while. I even was part of a math club in high school, <laughs> which I don't talk about much. But um, I used to just look at the pictures and then just draw them, and that's kind of my background. But then, so as far as school, um, like I grew up going to a private school, um, then transferred to a public school, which was totally um, weird for me, because I went to a school that was pretty, um, it had a wide, it was a good mix of, I, I guess, just races. It was a lot of, you know, pretty equally mixed and I went from there to a high school that was all Latino and part, you know, African American, which was to me, which was like a shock because I was not, not this something. This was in Houston? This was in Houston. So it wasn't something I was used to. I kind of felt out of place a lot of times. A lot of people, because of my, how, the way I grew up, a lot of people would ask me if I were half white or if I were just like mixed or this and that because I didn't talk like everyone in my high school. Um, so that, I mean, all, a lot of that has just, helped me evolve to the person I am. And then after high school, I went to uh, Washington University in St. Louis for a couple years. Um, when I was young, I knew I wanted to do something in the field of art, but I didn't know that being an artist was really a profession. So I went in thinking that I was gonna study advertising design and do advertising, because I was like, oh, advertising, there's a lot of that. That must be where the big bucks are. But then once I went to Wash U, and was in front of a computer for one class, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna sit in front of a computer my whole life. And so the, I only spent two years there, so I spent those two years just really um, mastering my drawing skills. Um, I worked with the professors there and just did as much drawing as I possibly could. Mostly, in, I started out graphite, but by the time I left there, I was working mostly in ballpoint pen. That's kind of where that started. And then uh, after there, moved back home, um, not really, still not knowing what I wanted to do um, as far as being an artist. I was still sort of uh, confused, not really confused, but just uncertain of what profession I should, you know, find my, find my way into. And so I started school all over, went to community college for a while, uh, eventually transferred to U of, uh, University of Houston where I was able to work with a professor named, uh, an artist named David Hickman. Um, and that, he's the one who inspired me to start painting. And he actually, he passed away a year after I graduated, but he was the reason why like, I started painting. Like, I remember I took a color and illustration class with him, and he told me, if you want to be an artist, you need to paint. He's like, if you want to be a real artist, you got to paint. And I was just like, okay. And so I started painting, and I didn't stop. And then from there, I you know, uh, eventually moved to San Antonio and to go to UTSA to pursue my master's degree, which I got in December of 2014. And then now, I, now I'm here and yeah. And so growing, <laughs> grow, growing up in Houston. Thank you. <laughs> growing up in Houston, you didn't go to museums, you didn't? No, my first, the first time I went to a museum wasn't even in the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. It was a museum of, uh, in San Antonio. I mean, not San Antonio, in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I went to an art museum. Um, just because, 
you know, growing up, most of the museums they took us to were the national, I mean, like, not national, but the science museum right. or the zoo, um, but never the art museum. So I didn't go until I was 18 years old was the first time I went to the art museum. I, yeah, even as a kid, the first time, I remember I was about 15 years old, the first time I knew that artists could work and sell paintings was uh, from a movie called Bomb by Honor, uh, which was features like a local, uh, local actor Jesse Borrego, and then an artist, Adon Hernandez, actually made the artwork for that movie. So the movie is about this East Los Angeles culture, but there's, there was one character in the movie who was a painter, and I really, it really struck a chord to me, because throughout the movie you see him like he would just come from this lower class family, but then you see him like showing his work in a gallery and then like selling his work in the gallery. And at the time I was like, I had never seen anything like that before. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, people can do that. Were you and in high school then? I was, I was just, in, just entering high school uh -huh. around that time. Uh -huh. So, but that was like my first exposure to, you know, to fine art was art even, world. but just even, but even just that, but most of the sign was like low rider magazines and comic books. And I didn't even read the comic books. I just looked at the artwork. I was like, okay, that's cool. Let me go try and draw something else. And then. So why don't we look at some, some images? Sure, yeah. This looks like an early work. That is. So since uh, I decided to call my installation of series portraits of a working artist. So I decided to focus on self portraits I'd done along the way, plus some other stuff that's influenced that. So this is actually, uh, a self-portrait I did while I was at while I was in St. Louis. So I was about 19 at this age, and you see my hair. There's a lot of it sticking up in that picture. <laughs> and at the time, it was actually about that color. I dyed my hair blonde and orange at one point. It was like, oh, this was blonde, like reddish orange and red. It's funny because now I use orange and everything. It's fun, now that I think about that, um, is this a collage? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's just a, a magazine clippings of collage. So. Um, and then painted over? No, there's no paint on oh, it. It's, it's, just, all, it's, it's, just, it's just all collage. It's just all, um, yeah, this was an assignment we had in, I guess, in undergrad at that point. We were supposed to use colors that were opposite and only use a few colors. So I, I don't know, I went, I don't know. I, when, I, when I was doing this, I thought I was challenging myself to do, like, to, use, to focus on these yellow, greens, and purples as a way to create a, a portrait of myself. And then this is what I sort of came up with. And then, so fast forward. Um, fast forward about, I guess, 10 years or so. So it took me a while from being in St. Louis to start all over and figure out what I wanted to do in life. So when I was at U of H, uh, University of Houston, um, I started working, my last semester there, I did a, uh, an independent study where I focused on public art. And the reason I started public art, so for about seven years of my life, I was a delivery driver of sorts. I worked for, you know, delivered groceries. I worked for a commercial printing company. I delivered uh, pizza, deli food. I was driving around. I worked for uh, a pool company where I went and did finishing work. So I was, I was driving around Houston. I spent five or six hours of my day in a vehicle yeah. driving around Houston. If any, if any of y'all have been in Houston, that's, that's, that's a, that's, it seems like a lifetime. So. <laughs> What I've noticed, or what I started to notice and just started to observe the more I was out was just, I started seeing construction everywhere. And around 2008, 2009, a lot of my friends and family were, were losing jobs. Um, people who were working in the oil field um, and just a number of places. So I started working on this series of construction signs and started thinking like, you know what? When I drive around, I see a lot of people working outside. And then I hear a lot of people complaining inside that there's no work. I'm like, wait a second, if you just walk outside, you can, there's a lot of jobs you can do. I mean, you might just have to work a little harder from what you're used to, but there's still opportunities for you to take advantage of if you want to, you know, help yourself and your family. So I started this series, um, and I started installing these signs uh, around Houston. Some of them were temporary installations. I started doing them sort of just without permission, but then a lot of the signs were being taken up, I'm guessing by the city. And so I started getting permission to do them. So I got permission to put some at U of H, at my old high school, and a couple other places like on the side of buildings. And I don't know, something just struck, struck a chord with me. And I just really, something about that really just got me, I don't know, motivated. And then I, from that, it turned into where I started passing out stickers that shared that same message. And then all of a sudden, like people were telling me like, oh, these are great. And I had people sending me like text messages like, oh, I put this on my, you know, studio box or I put this here and there. And so it was just, it, that was the moment when I realized 
I know what I, I know what I need, I know what I can say now with my paintings, because before this, when I was, I, I mean, I was doing a lot of painting, but I really didn't know, it, to me, it didn't feel like I was saying anything important enough. <laughs> like, I was like, I know how to paint, but I don't want to just show these paintings of concert, because I was, at, before this, I was doing a lot of images of, like, uh, rock stars, and I go into concerts taking photos, painting that, and I was like, I don't really want to be that person who makes, you know, this fan art, and so, <laughs> I, so once I got to this, it kind of just stuck with me. And, um, and were all the signs, did they all say the same thing? They all the same no, they all, they all said something different. Like, some of them said work together, some of them were in English and Spanish. Um, but yeah, most of them said work harder, some said hope still ahead, because um, I, you know, inspired by like the Obama hope poster, right. but then I thought about like, well, hope is sort of here, but then there's still opportunity for there to be more hope in the future. So I had, the, the two ones were work harder and hope still ahead. Those are the ones I had posted. Are, are any sure. of them still there, you think? Um, you know? No, they were all, temp like most of them were up between six months to a year, and then they were taken down. But then, I, they, were, they were stored at a, at a house I used to live in, and then the landlord, we were, I was renting, so the landlord hired somebody to clean some stuff in her backyard, so they took, I had like three signs left over, and they were all taken. <laughs> They were just thrown away, but uh, it's okay. I've, I've made more since then. <laughs> and so... Is it another self-portrait? Yeah, this is another self-portrait, um, which I did the following year. I, um, I started looking at workers a lot more and thinking about my dad, who uh, has been working in construction for like 30 plus years, and just imagine myself, not as, well, as a construction worker, but just thinking of myself as just part of like, I don't know, the economy, as part of like a worker in sort of like a, basically, you know, a system and like, you know, sort of contributing, but at the same time, it's like, do I want to see myself as just a worker? And so this was like, you know, almost looking at myself in the future, but at the same time, like, sort of like after I pass away, do like, mm -hmm. is that all I want to see myself as, just as a worker, or do I want to do something more than that? Mm -hmm. Is this a painting? It's a painting collage drawing, so it's a combination of acrylic, ballpoint pen, markers, um, there's stickers and different types of paper layered on top of that. Um, and this is made still in Houston? Yeah, this was, I was still in Houston mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And then this is, uh, I did the same year, so just thinking about the idea of the self-portrait or just myself, um, you know, thinking of myself as having more of a, What's the word? Um, not relationship, but having the same sort of life experiences as a lot of my friends. Um, in Houston, there's a lot of uh, cops who have attitudes, I would just say. Um, so I, 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 I found that whenever I would drive around, I would get pulled over. Like in, it's funny, because let me knock on some wood. Since I moved to San Antonio, I, I besides, well, never mind. Okay, so, so I, have, I, have, I have not been pulled over in San Antonio for any reason. And there's, I mean, I don't try to make reasons too, but in Houston, I felt like I was getting pulled over like twice a year for a while. And I felt like I was being racially profiled mm -hmm. based on the way I look. And it's, it doesn't really look like me now, but if you look at the second row, third, you know, third column, you'd see me right there with a little bit of hair on the top <laughs> of my head. But I just felt like, um, I mean, you know, I just felt like I was, I had a lot of experiences just driving around and not just driving in my own vehicle, but as a delivery driver, when I would go deliver work, there would be security guards who I would, they would treat me differently than they would people who would go, I mean, I would see them treat people differently who were there before me. And they're usually of a different race. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not cool. And so I just asked a lot of my friends and coworkers, just like, you know, ask them about those sort of experiences. And some of them were like, they've experienced in themselves. Some were like, you know, I, but they, some of them, they saw themselves like, oh, I could see that happening to me. So I put this, I put, I took photos of everyone in front of this uh, medical height chart. And uh, so this, yeah. And these are all people this, you know? Or these are all people that know. And the piece is actually called, I was, drive 50, I was driving 54, I was driving 55 and a 54. Uh, hmm. which is based off a Jay-Z song. Um, and then this is me, again, the same year. Um, and so this is from a series I called the Deconstruction Series, where I was sort of, so most people don't know this. And uh, before I became happily married with my wife, who's in the back walking around with our daughter, uh, I was married before, and it was not very good. Uh, experience, I mean, I would just, you know, you know whatever. Um, and so at the time, I had, there was a lot of stuff happening in my life, mostly based on just like an unhappy marriage. So I started just 
sort of taken everything apart and then trying to like put it back together to figure out what am I doing? What am I really working on? Um, you know, how is this like helping me moving forward with, you know, with what I want to do? So I, so I did this, this piece is actually pretty big. It's, I, I made myself about seven and a half feet tall, mm -hmm. um, just cause well, I was like, why not? I was like, uh, <laughs> I, I hadn't really, I don't do a lot of self portraits. I do, I do, well, that's the thing. I do about one or two a year. And so this is one of the, you know, one of the few I did that year. And it, I, I, I wanted to do something that challenged myself too. So. But yeah, it's a painting. Yeah, that's a it's a painting, and it's a there's a lot of collage. So there's a lot of different. There's wood. There's um there's photographs. There's pieces of tin. There's cut up signs. Um, digital photographs. So it's actually it's it's a it's a painting collage. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is uh, so this is you know not self portraits, but just to sh um, I wanted to show work that I guess moving forward I sort of returned to looking at just workers on the street and um, sort of took, sort of took a break from sort of um, like, ref like internal reflection and just looked at uh, you know, what other people are doing as far as work. And so this piece, these pieces are called utility and uh, water from the machine. So, um, I mean, that's just, it's just, it's something that keeps reoccurring and I, I, keep, and I keep going back to is uh, the portrayal of the worker um, just as, as an everyday person, just because if you look at it, you know, around, everyone, everyone works, everyone has a job. Um, some jobs are difficult, and if you look at these, like, you know, this guy is up in the air in not a safe environment. This guy is getting water from his machine that he's driving, and he'll probably drink some of that because he's thirsty. And so I just started, I don't know, looking at those things. Are these based on photographs? Yeah, so most of the work I did, and I don't recommend this, but uh, so when I was a delivery driver, I used to take tons of photos with my camera while driving <laughs> and not while not while holding the phone though i got it down to a uh, i figured out a technique to where i can like set the timer and set the um what's it called the focus to where i can you know focus on something ahead and then just let it take photos a number of photos and then from that well, i would get pretty good photos out of it and then well and then sometimes i would ride around on my bike and then stop and take photos too and for some reason, I sense these are small work. Yeah, these, so the one on the r left is, I believe it's 24 inches by 24 inches, and the one on the right is actually a stop sign that I found and that I drew on the back of. So that's just uh, whatever, mm -hmm. no parking or no parking sign or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to show this piece because uh, the, I guess the last piece, I sh uh, one of the ones on the previous slide, the one on the right uh, that was on the back of the sign, I gave that to uh, I gave that to Richard Duardo, who I was able to do a residency with um, at the end of um, my first semester at UTSA. So let me rewind a little bit. So these two were done in my first semester of grad school. At the end of my first semester, uh, I was I was introduced to Richard Duardo. Um, Arturo Almeida, who's a UTSA curator, he introduced me because he happened to be in town and, for the art. Uh, and Richard uh, was based in California. Right. Correct. He, but uh, he was here for the, for the show at the Estampas de la Raza. Right. And so he came and did a studio visit and really liked my work and then so invited me to LA to do a printmaking studio, uh, to do a printmaking residency with him. And so that's what the next slide, the next slide is, is um, I was there for a week and so we took this, he really liked the drawings I was doing of just everyday uh, landscapes and sort of these urban environments. And so he really liked, the one we were looking at my work, he really liked this piece. And at first this was just a black and white uh, drawing. And so when we were there, you know, he was showing me the techniques of printmaking, uh, gave me a lot of good advice. And then so we, while I was there, we did this. This is an 11 color screen print which I'm, hap I'm also very you know, happy to say it's, uh, there's one of these in the McNagus collection. Um, it was donated by uh, Ricardo Romo, um, who's been very supportive of my work since I moved here. But I mean, that's one of the, re one of the reasons why I want to show. But what's this location? This is actually in Houston. This is a place called Tampico Refrescaria. It's a place where they sell snow cones mm -hmm. and uh, elote and uh, mm -hmm. licuados and and had you done much printmaking before you did this? No. Well, I've, I, did, I had done some printmaking, but most of it were, was woodcuts. I did some um, 
image on printing with Dennis Olson at UTSA. But this was my first screen print, and I and I didn't do, I didn't do it all myself. I I worked with Richard, but then I worked with him to I guess with the idea he showed me how to how to work the material. But then the actual printmaking of it was with um, his I guess one of the other master printers in his shop. So then him I worked hand in hand with the other master printer to to actually produce this print. And so this so, isn't yours. So this is not mine. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but just, just clarifying. <laughs> Even it has a name at the bottom. Right. Uh, okay. So, well, most people don't realize. So, moving forward, I started to really think about. Let me get a sip of water. So, I really started to think about work again. I'm really started thinking about the artists at work. And so, it's funny because when I look, when I was looking for these images online, these weren't images that I was necessarily looking at at the time. Like this was around 2012. I wasn't necessarily looking at them. I just remember them for art history classes and thinking about um, the artist's portrayal of themselves as workers. Like, you know, you all, you, there's like always these images of them working in a studio, a lot of times painting these royal subjects or like there's people watching them. And so I started thinking about, well, maybe I should, you know, sort of take a break from looking at what's around me and look at myself and like, what am I doing? And what am I doing as my studio practice? And how can I make that part of my, you know, make part of my professional practice? And how can I portray that when I share, you know, paintings, drawings, or images, et cetera? And you can go to the- I think we have some more that are, some more from this. Yeah, so group. there's yeah. a couple more just to give uh, an idea. And so I was really influenced by Matisse too at the at the, around this time, just really with his use of um, colors, um, the boldness of them, the way they just—I mean—they're very striking. And I noticed that when I was looking, it was this Matisse painting really looked a lot like what my studio was looking like. Except there, I mean, there were paintings everywhere, but then there also I had you know painted the floor and painted the walls because I just wanted to be surrounded by painting. Like I wanted, I almost wanted it to like sort of like in engulf me and take me over mm -hmm. and then spit me back out so I can, you know, have something better to say. Or that's what, that's so, what I um, <laughs> you, you talk a lot about sort of making art being work. Right. And do you think that people who are not involved in art making or not involved in the art world don't consider art making work? I don't think so. Because, um, I mean, if you look at I me, mean, a lot of artists are underpaid or sometimes not paid at all. They're asked to do stuff for free a lot of times. There are, a lot of artists are asked to do work, and the, the, the exchange is not always money. Right. So in any other profession, if you ask somebody to do something, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I'll give you $100 because you know, I know you do this. But for an artist, it's not always the case, so it kind of pisses me off, um, and I'm sure it does to a lot of artists. But, but the more I, like, I worked and then you know, started working with other artists, I noticed that 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 conversation was, I wasn't just having a conversation with myself. There are a lot of artists who felt the same way. Sure. And so to me, it just seemed like, okay, well, let's, well let's, let's, let's continue with that. Let's share that because I think it's important that, you know, if you look at other societies, like I, I took, uh, if you look at other societies, they look at artists, they put them a little bit higher on mm -hmm. the sort of society level. And then and maybe in the U.S., not so much. Like for the most part, most people think like artists are people who are like hobbyists, and they're doing like, oh, you're just having fun, you're just drawing, sure. you're just doing this and doing that, and you know, you're not really working. So, right. which is so not true. Um, but uh, so, sorry, looks like we're shifting gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no. So, well, it may seem like it, but so while I was inspired by those artists' work. Um, I wanted to start doing images that were a little bit more realistic and return to sort of my, um, you know, practicing my, I guess, skill of drawing and rendering. But around this time, which is around, uh, I guess this was like, this is uh, 2013. So you were here. I was this, this I'm here in San Antonio now. Um, I re-injured my hand. So in 2011, I had a hand injury that prevented me from really drawing the way I wanted to be able to. And so when I was around 2013, I re-aggravated it. I was, use, I, was doing a lot of I was doing a lot of printmaking, so I was using a lot of power tools. And so all that was really doing was just making my hand 
sort of, I mean, not really useless, but I, I couldn't draw. Like if I wanted, I mean, I could draw, but if, if I wanted to, I couldn't draw the way I wanted to do. I, it, was, it was difficult for me to even draw a, a straight line at times. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if I were doing too many things in a studio, if I wanted to draw something real tight, I, I just couldn't. So because of that, I was like, well, I have to find another way to sort of share all these ideas, to sort of share this energy that I have. And so I started working with other materials. I started working with cardboard and duct tape. Instead of you know, painting and drawing, I was using the tape as a means to create lines and you know, color and pattern. So I started doing these installations um, in my studio and started thinking like, well, this is a place where I work. This is a the place where I practice um, anything that I want to do. So I started putting myself into the studio, and then that's when I, that's what this is when I really started doing performance art. So like you, on this this was from a piece that I did called I used to want to be on Soul Train. <laughs> so I created this this sort of dance set using all these pieces of paintings, all these paintings that I sort of made over a couple of months. And then I did a video, and I didn't bring a clip of that video just because it's very low quality when I made it. Um, it's on, I think it's on YouTube. But um, <laughs> so yeah, so I put myself in front of the camera and decided, like, you know, I want to be part of the painting. I can't draw right now, so let me let me be the line, let me be the movement, let me be the pattern, let me be the object in the painting. And so I started recording myself in front of this in these installations to do that. And, and on, you'll see that picture where I'm wearing the suit. So I purposely, when I did that performance, I dressed myself in all black because a lot of times when you're being taught to paint, you're told to not use black, um, which I always thought was funny. Just a funny thing to you know, not, you know, not want your students to do. So I, I was like, I'm gonna dress in all black because I grew up looking at comic books, so I always think about that, that dark line that travels mm -hmm. from page to page. So I want to be that, that black line that, you know, that creates the movement in this space. And you had not done any performance before this? Before that, uh, my performance was very limited to say. I was like, when I was doing the construction signs, um, what you didn't see in the picture is like, when I would go do the installations, I would, I would hang around the area and wear a construction vest, I would wear a hard hat, and kind of just hang out. So I wasn't really performing, I was just kind of hanging out to really to try and capture any, uh, any response from people mm -hmm. who like, would stop at uh, the side of the, you know, who would be at stoplights. And then also, maybe about in 2011, I did this one, sh I put together this one show in Houston called Fun and Games, where I curated, I, you know, I organized a show, so it was all these artists showing work that had to do with fun and games, but then at the same time, in the gallery, I set up um, tables for people to play chess, to play checkers, mm -hmm. to play um, just different board games. So that way people who went, and then also, and then also we also played a game of tag. <laughs> so I was thinking about, like on Facebook, when people, you're always getting tagged in photos, whether you want to or not. So I was like, well, let's play a game of tag in the studios, I mean, in the gallery. So we played a tag, so you had to put on your name, you had to put on a name tag so people know who you were and that you were participating. But then we played like a quiet game where we were running around, mm. touching each other, you know, tagging each other. But that, but that was sort of it. That was like sort of my first attempt at performance. But then once I moved here, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to grad school because I want to be a full-time artist, so there's no holding back. Mm -hmm. I like to dance. That needs to, be part of my, needs to be part of my practice, so let's go for it. And we'll and, see that in just a few Yeah, minutes, we'll right? see that a little bit. All of my work is not, when I first started doing performance, it wasn't all about dancing. I started out doing dancing, but at the same time, I was like, okay, there needs to be a balance. It can't just be about, or it can't just appear that I'm looking like I'm just having fun because I wasn't. <laughs> and so I started doing these pieces that were a little bit more aggressive. I started putting, I really started like, I was like, if, I, like if I'm gonna go in, I have to like go all in and put my body to the test through, you know, these performances. And to me, uh, putting them to the test, it felt like I was, I consider myself part of the, like, you know, part of the painting or part of the installation. So. So you'll see, so I, yeah, so I started doing. So this next piece, the, the clip we're gonna see, where was that? So that one is at High Wire Arts. And it's a piece called, I get down, I, I get down, I get up. And it's basically about not giving up. So I was, um, I dressed in a nice suit. I wore a, a crown that I made out of plexiglass and I had someone 
repeatedly push me for seven minutes in front of a painting I installed and then just kept getting up and let them and just let them keep pushing so me. So we're just going to see an excerpt. We'll see a, a minute of that clip. Ready? Yeah. The other performer, not you. Is he really pushing you hard? Oh yeah, he definitely is. I after I did this for I did a number of variations of this performance for about a month, and I had bruises all over my chest. And I think now I still have every now and then little pain. Right, I think I have like some scar tissue. I had, yeah, <laughs> scar tissue. It was a little rough. I probably should have wore a little bit more padding, but I was like, you know what, whatever. And is that your I, painting I, behind you? That's a painting behind. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you made. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what was the reaction to this performance? Um, I was, I got a good response. I mean, from a lot of people, they were just really thrilled to see something like that. Um, people, I don't know, were impressed the fact that I was able to do it. It was good. And then like, you know, I got, a, it was a good overall response. And then for myself too, it just, it helped me like it helped me want to be able to like leap forward. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, if I can do that, then I should be able to do something more challenging than that. Was this one of the first public performances you did? This one, yes, it was one of the first ones, mm -hmm. I believe. And I think we're gonna see another clip next. Correct. Yeah. So, what's the, so we'll see set, the, set up the next we'll see clip. the flip side of where you know it's not about danger, but it's more about my bringing my dance, the my dancing influences, and then sort of having fun while at the same time. I guess consider myself part of an installation or painting. So when was this made? Um, that was the same year. Mm -hmm. That was like mm -hmm. the same month that I made the other piece. Mm -hmm. um, I made them. At, I made them. Actually, I made them at the same time. Like I like I was just. I don't know. I always do. I like to do opposites at the same time. To me, well, it just feels. I mean, there is some humor in this piece. Right. So there was a. So we didn't see that in other work before this. Correct. So yeah. So yeah. That's a, so there was a, another. This was at also UTSA. There was another student in the class that I had, I felt like, you know, if I had hair <laughs> and had glasses, I would look like that guy. And so I approached him and I was like, you know, you want to work on this collaboration with me? He was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I just thought it was, and then he happened, and I told, him, I told him what type of shirt he should bring. And we basically had the same shirt. So I was like, oh, this is, this is going to work out perfect. And so, yeah, I just wanted to do something that was fun and a little bit more lighthearted, I guess. And this exists only as a video, so it wasn't a, a live Correct. Even the installation in the back, which is actually larger than what you see, it's, a, it's acrylic on cardboard, which I've then cut up and added to other paintings, or they've mm -hmm. turned into other paintings. And so, at the same time, like I said, I had hurt my hand. So after I did all these performances, I was like, you know what? I need to get back to using, I guess, the t rendering technical skill that I, you know, that I've always had. So this was a really, ch this was a challenge for me. So this was about four feet by four feet. Um, it's 24 karat gold dust mixed with clear acrylic medium, 
It's on one side of a piece of acrylic plexi. And so the whole thing I scratched out with the uh, with etching tools, which uh, I used a scriber. Uh, so the whole thing, you, and I'm like, the whole idea was to create a drawing out of light. So even though it was a painting, I, I, was, I was thinking of it as a drawing. So I was like, the only way to create a drawing out of light is to allow the light to be the line. So I drew the, I sketched the image out on one side and then spent a few months scratching it out. And it was, it was really challenging because at the end of it, I had to take another break from drawing because my hand was exhausted after this. But, um, and, then, and then this piece also, um, like, yeah, it was, I knew it was gonna be a challenge, but at the same time I was like, I need to do, I need to do something with this. And so I submitted this to uh, the, uh, the Hunting Art Prize. I don't know mm -hmm. if you are familiar with that. So I was selected as a 2014 Hunting Art Prize finalist with this piece, which was, which was awesome, so. It's like, so it was, sorry, go ahead. So you, so you, you mentioned the gold, gold dust or? Yeah. So how, how is that? So it's, uh, it was basically grinded up gold mixed with clear acrylic, uh, clear acrylic medium that was just then mixed. So mm -hmm. it was actually, like gold paint that just. Um, right, that you coated the surface with? Yeah, so I basically, one side of it, I, co I did about seven or eight layers. Okay. And because I knew I had to do that, because in order to like, if you look at some of the like the pant, I don't know how well it shows in there, but if you look at some of the pant legs and areas, you'll see sort of um, like shadows and shading. And the way to to do that is um, I had to like while I was scratching it out, I had to regularly spray the thing with water, and then use a scriber to like remove little layers. That way more light, just like a little bit of light could shine sure. through our sections, and that way it creates a sense of shadows and, um. <clears throat> so yeah, that was uh, 2013, so the following year, the following, the, few, the months to follow after that, I was able to take a trip to Berlin uh, with UTSA for two weeks, and I decided to put myself um, in the painting also, so I, I brought all these, um, paintings I made out of just plastic tarp or plastic or plastic and duct tape and I treated them as dance floor so I went around Berlin um, dancing in the streets at number of like about five or six places so that's the image on the left and that actually is that's part of the installation that you'll that's upstairs in the frost octagon yeah, so one of the videos we're showing is, uh, is excerpt from this. No, I, I, full... we're not showing that one. Oh, but yeah. I mean from this series. Of, oh yeah, from the series, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah from that series. Um, so yeah, I started really thinking about um, the artists in space, not just in my studio, but like thinking about, well, how about, is, how about you know, what's, what's wrong with taking over any space? So mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is an open space. I can consider this a painting if I, you know, if I really wanted to. I was like, I can create lines, I can create, a place for me to, uh, you know, boundaries for me to sit in, and so, and so I did. And then, when I returned, um, Christy Blizzard, who's a professor at UTSA, she asked myself and a number of other uh, UTSA students to collaborate with her for the camp perennial at the Guadalupe, and she wanted us to walk around with paintings. And so I was like, well, I have this painting that I have holes in. I was like, I'm just going to wear my painting. I was like. I was wearing my painting in Berlin, so I want to come back and wear a painting again and walk around, you and know, walk around with that. The, does it say something or is it just... It says boom. Boom? Boom. <laughs> and so uh, after Berlin, I came back um, still not really doing much drawing or doing a lot of uh, really detailed work. And so I was still thinking about construction um, and building, but instead of Again, looking at looking out into the street for inspiration, I just looked about you know was looking at my own personal what was going on in my own life. So I started. So instead of um, you know instead of using anything illustrative or figurative, I started building. I started building my paintings, and so I, I started this series called the, it was the Bridge series, and it was I was influenced by a lot of things. Like the one on the left is called. It's called Bridge Number Eleven, Post Berlin. Again, I was thinking about the painting. Um, you know, after thinking of myself as a painting in space, I wanted to make paintings that sort of enter, you know, space that they no that they don't normally do. And then, yeah, the series I ended up making about 24, 25 pieces in that series, and they all vary. And like the one on the, I guess it's the right with the uh, light and the big pink strike on it. That was when um. 
it's funny because I started thinking about construction and building, but I also started thinking about relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also had just got uh, married um, at the end of 2013. So I was thinking about relationships, not just with my wife, but just with like people in general and started thinking about uh, relationships that societies have with each other, relationships that strangers have with each other. Um, so the piece on the right is actually called, um, it's like bridge number one, it's called Creating a New Path, Blue Light, Pink Strike. And that one, it's about, so there were a lot of people who told me, um, you know, after, before, actually before I got married, like, okay, you're married now, you don't want to have any kids right away because you want to be an artist, you can't have a kid because it's going to be, it's going to be really difficult. And so I started thinking, and so I started thinking about the path of being an artist that you take. And so I was like, well, I'm going to create a sort of difficult path for me to go on, but it's going to be illuminated because I know there's, there's more than what it seems to be there. And so the pink strike actually came at the end because that's, um, I st once we found out, once my wife became pregnant, when we found out I was in a girl, like, it just became this thing, like, well, so I created that pink strike as, like, well, that gives me, I feel like once we had a kid, it actually gave me, it actually created a path, like, the, the path right. almost seemed easier. It's like, it, I was like, oh, I know how to get there because, I don't know, it's something so about. It's in a sense, you're sort of illustrating that path. Yeah, it, it, I was, and to the best way I could at the time. Um, and then after I did the bridge series, I kind of moved away from building, from building things again because my, uh, it was just a little too much. It was just a little too much work for my hands. So I, I returned to just wanting to paint and draw, and so I started, do, I started doing it again to, as a way to like, you know, to get the juices flowing again. That way I can, I, you know, I can use my hand regularly. So I, I started this series, which I haven't, I haven't shown any, any of these works yet. But this is a series called, well, the series is actually called This Is What, it's feel, this is what It Feels Like. I've showed paintings from that series, but not this particular, this particular what group. What sort of scale is this? So this is about 32 inches by 36 inches. Oh, so and it's, yes, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's a uh, easel size, but it's, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's not, it's on loose canvas and it's just, it's graphite and, um, and acrylic paint. And there's also some screen printing ink. And I was, so I was really thinking about combining elements of, Painting, drawing. But that, but that seems to be your strategy all along. Yeah, I mean, from it, the beginning you were sort of combining it, it, all it, of these. It is, but then for some reason I feel like I had to sort of step back and look at it again. Mm -hmm. And I think before it was more about combining and then I really started about, I guess, not just because I got married, but like as a way to like really marriage the two or merge them mm -hmm. together. So this piece is actually called Kind of Blue because um, around the same time I was, there was actually a lot of things were happening with my family back in Houston, and um, a lot of hor honestly horrible things. I won't get into that much right now, but there was just a lot of bad stuff happening that I, part of me felt like I wish I could help or wish I was something I could do. Um, but living here, I was like, not even just living here, even if I were in Houston, I was like, I, there's still, there's often times where you're still re restrained. You, you know, there's still restraint even if you don't want there to be. So I feel like there was like all these things happening, but there was like something that was holding me back. And at the same time, I'm still trying to like hold it all together. Mm -hmm. So this was in a way, this was, this was sort of the return to, to the self portrait, but a little bit more, um, I mean, I guess still, I mean, it's still abstract. And then, um, so. We're moving more abstract. We're moving more abstract. Yeah. It's funny because when I was in Houston doing abstract work, there was about a, a period where I was like, you know what? I'm not doing abstract paintings ever again. There was just something about them. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing that. I can't do it. And then all of a sudden, I'm here, and then like that's all I that's all I could do. It's like I wanted to work. Um, I was looking at a lot of abstract expressionists. I was reading a lot of books um, by just artists I've looked up to. Like um, I was looking at, I was reading some of uh, Jackson Pollock's like uh, writings from mm -hmm. his journal. Um, I can't think of anybody else right now, but I was looking at a lot of other artists' work and thinking about abstract expressionism, and I was like, okay, my work has been a little bit wild, I'll say, um, you know, before this, and I was like, I want to tame all that and find a, a place that's a little bit more calm, but where that energy is, is still very much alive. And so this is, this is called Portrait of a New Father, and so 
I really started to think like, okay, I can't focus on all these things that are happening um, that are bad. I need to f I need to start focusing on like what's ahead. Mm -hmm. And so then I then I then I started this. But this wasn't the first piece in the series. There was another one I did um, where I started using this composition where everything kind of sort of circles each other. And this one it sort of does, but not so much. But I really started thinking about you know our daughter and how she was inside the womb. But then how, like, when the daughter's in the womb, she's in that, so she, this is her world in here, but this is also her world in here, like, the, the space that her mother, you sure. know, lives in, and not just the mother, it's like, the family, et cetera, and, you know, it just, it just, everything sort of just keeps encompassing each other, so I was really thinking about that with that body of work. Um, and then we jump to this, this image, which doesn't seem like it relates, but at the time it made sense to me. <laughs> because... At the time it was made. At the time it was made, yeah. Because I was still thinking about abstract expressionism, and then I was still... I was mad. I was really mad and sad. Um, it's just another performance. Yeah, this was a performance. Like, at the time, too, my... Um, hold on a second. My mom had went into the hospital. Uh, she became... Can we move on? No, uh, just give me a second. She became terminally ill, um, so I had a lot of frustration that I wanted to get out. And so I was thinking about abstract expressionism and just, I was thinking about action painting and how, you know, st it still happens, but you look in the past, you, there's a lot of artists, they, when I was reading all these things about artists, it's all about their them applying the paint to the canvas and sort of like sort of attacking the canvas, almost attacking it as a as a way to release emotion. So I started thinking about like, well, man, artists have been beating up paintings for a really long time. I was like, when did the paintings get to fight back? <laughs> and so I was like, well, you know what? I was like, let me get a group of guys together who would be interested inter interested in doing something like this. And so I had, we all dressed up, I guess, as, war, as sort of painting warriors, took, pa took paintings that maybe had some meaning to us or not, but that, like, as, as um, so we just, we ended up doing this piece at High Wire Arts where we fought each other with each other's paintings. <laughs> so we used our bodies to throw at each other. We used the paintings to hit e uh, other paintings, but we also used the paintings, as you can see, a shield. to hit each other. Well, it was sort of a shield, but also just to uh, hurt each other. And yeah, and then, and then um, and that's basically it. I just felt like that was something I had to do at the time. It just felt, it was just much needed. Um, We're gonna have to move through these next okay, yeah, pretty quick. Sure. So, Use, uh, after, that, after that performance, I had a lot of paintings that were destroyed. So I started thinking about, well, how, I need to fix these paintings up because they're still beautiful and they can still be used. So I started thinking about life and death and about rebirth and just like transforming into something else. So I started taking these paintings and um, thinking about family members and myself and then um, just repurposing the paintings and then completely painting over them to turn them into something a little bit more so, beautiful. So these were made after the, the battle of the yeah, paintings? So, well, yeah, so these were not paintings used in the battles. There were other ones that were used before this that I sort of was using sort of as like a models to work this way. And so this piece is called, one, of, one on the left is Prickly Pear. Um, it's sort of, a, it's a portrait of my wife, my daughter, and my, and my mom. <coughs> And the one on the right is a portrait of myself. It's called, uh, No One Told Me Being a Father Would Feel Like This. <laughs> so I was going back to working abstractly, but I wanted to um, bring a little bit more life and love into the piece. And this is just an installation mm -hmm. of the work at Radius it Gallery. It gives a sense of the scale of these paintings. Right, so yeah. Kind of yes. large scale. Yeah, so I was working a little bit bigger. I wanted to feel more, you know, as a way, almost like I can leap into the painting. <clears throat> And this is just another one, just um, from These this are more series. recent, this is the last couple yeah, this years? Is, yeah, so these paintings I, um, I've done over the past couple of years, and each one I work on from anywhere from three months to like a year. So they all, they all take a really long time to work on. Um, but while I was working on those abstract paintings, see a lot of the abstract paintings I do, I'm not really like rushing to try and show them anywhere. To me, a lot of it is real about, really about, me, you know, sort of, uh, it's like meditative, it's about self-reflection. Um, and that's why I do them. 
But at the same time, um, I had an opportunity to have a solo show at Freight Gallery here in San Antonio. So I was like, I want to do something that's a little bit more, that people can relate to a little bit more. And also, I've been doing a lot of um, practice of getting my hands back in shape. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I could finally draw the way I wanted to do. So I worked on this. This is the Texas series, which I started. Um, and these are uh, acrylic and graphite on printmaking paper. And these are both about 32 inches by about 40 inches. And the one on the left is called uh, Water Break, like Water Burger, but Water Break. <laughs> uh, and it says Good to Drink. And the other one is just Water Break. Um, yeah, and so that was a lot. That, I, there that was, was about, very recent because you showed was, those about a month, two months ago. Yeah, I, the, the opening for that was in April, and that included about twenty-six new pieces um, that I did for that show. And so and this is a piece that's exhibited upstairs, right? This is a piece that exhibited upstairs, and so like going back to the Vermeer and the Corbet, I find I I finally reached a point where I felt like okay, now I can try to like really not copy those artists work but really put myself in the in like in the painting or drawings because like the skill is back not that i lost it it's just like there was a period like i said there was a period where i just couldn't do it now it's like okay now i finally i'm finally there now i can really begin to add the the narrative and figurative part of my work which always returns and i'm usually always looking at work because it's like now it's back to like looking at the working artists what am I doing on a regular day basis and uh, moving forward with that? So this is actually just the beginning of a large series that I plan on working on. Um, I'll actually exhibit um, more of this series later this year at the Guadalupe Cultural Center, Cultural Arts Center in December um, as part of the Artist Lab program they have there mm -hmm. that, that, that uh, I'm a part of along with uh, several other artists. And I think we have one more clip. I think it's the video. Video. Right. So we have a, um, a short video. We're going to probably start it. We might not run the whole thing. Okay. Because just looking at the time, and I'm sure people want to see okay. your work upstairs. Right. Just tell us a little about the video. Okay, so the so. video is um, my way of sort of connect, sort of connecting the, or sort of painting a line from the show at Radius Gallery, which for me is, it's, it's, the show is called This Is What It Feel Like. It's all those abstract paintings. For me, those paintings are self-portraits. They're like, they're about the same thing, but totally abstract. So for me, it was a way of connecting that, ser that body of work to the body of work here at the McNay. And uh, so most people don't know, in my 20s, I was a runner. Like I ran the Houston Marathon in 2005. Um, I used to be very active. And so I always have that, that extra energy that I just need to release. So I'm like, as you can see through the videos I showed you, you know, we looked at, I like being active, I like sharing that energy, and so I, I'm just always looking for new ways to evolve and to sort of put that into the sphere of my, my professional practice. And so when this show, when we were putting together this show, I was like, it wouldn't be awesome for me to like to dance all the way from the Radius Center Which is to the McNair. Which is near the, the Radius, Tobin Center. Yeah, the Radius Center is across the street from the Tobin Center. And then also looking at just, you know, artists uh, locally and regionally, you have, artists who are working in the same sort of uh, manner. You have Jimmy James Canales, who, who did his walks from San Antonio to, uh, to, to Austin and throughout San Antonio. You have Christy Blizzard, um, who does, who, you know, jumps out of planes with paint, uh, not planes, but uh, yeah, planes with paintings, mm -hmm. or walks and spray paints, paint, uh, paintings on her back. You have the art guys from Houston who have been doing a number of walks throughout their career. And so I was like, you know what, I want to join that conversation and be part of that, but do it in my own way. Okay. And so this. So this was happened. This happened last Saturday. This was last Saturday. And it's about how four four miles. This is a four point six mile venture. And how long did that take you? It took close to two hours. Close to two hours. Okay. So let's there take were, a, little, a short look at this. Okay. And I think we're at the beginning, right? This is where you start. Yeah. This is. We're out here live at Radio Center. <laughs> we're about to head out in about fifteen minutes on a four point six mile dance trip. Uh, look for us on Instagram and Facebook, hashtag Portraits of Working Artists, hashtag Show to Show. Uh, see you around 4.30 at the McNay. We're gonna do this in one take, one take, reason. Where's the music coming from? So I had an assistant uh, wearing a speaker on him and following me the whole way. A friend, uh, another artist, Jose Cardenas, who you'll see behind me. Oh, he has the music. Yeah, he has the music. 
Could you always hear it? No, that's, that's the thing. So when we started, the speaker we were going to use decided not to work. So we had to run to Walgreens and and buy whatever portable speaker they had, and they only had this small, this very small one that only that didn't last the whole the whole performance. So a lot, of, so that and that's why it took a little long because there were times where I kept dancing backwards to catch up to him because I couldn't hear the music at all, and it kind of just kept throwing me off because I had practiced with the music. And um, and did you ever get an audience along the way? Well, yeah, you'll actually perfect timing because you'll see. Uh, yeah, they do happen. There would be times where people on bikes, as you'll see right now, <laughs> and there would be people on, in cars, trucks, people passing by, like honking, like, yeah, go for it, get it, get they it. They had no idea it. what you were doing. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, I thought that people would be like, get off the street or something, but people were just like, yeah, go for it. Uh, and I just, it was cool. I was like, man, I got a cheering squad, so I just, I kept going. <laughs> <laughs> And I see our sort of time is up, so okay. um, we're going to invite everyone if they want to come upstairs to see the work in person. Sure. And yeah. you'll be up there. Yes. Just a minute, and you can talk to people individually and meet, meet with them. So thank you so much All for right, thank you. sharing. Thank you. Thank you.